In this video, we're going to be creating the timer, uh, adding the, the little UI that's going to display the current time. In the future, we will also add a high score sheet and um, uh, you know, be able to put in the player, so keep track of a few different high scores there. This one is going to uh, reset the time, keep track of the current time when the player goes back to a checkpoint. First thing you're going to need is to grab a font. So I've already grabbed one here and we've got um, what have we got? I've grabbed this joystick mono space. Uh, I do like the mono space fonts for this kind of thing so that when the text is like ticking over from a zero to a one, um, it doesn't like change the whole shape of the, the text box as it gets smaller. So this is, this is quite good, but any of them are going to be fine. Really be able to work with, with anything. So joysticks mono space is a pretty good one. So I've downloaded that and I've extracted it to here. Um, and what we need is this one here. Now this is free for personal use. So I'm going to drag that into here. I uh, did, I think that came in. There it is. Um, it's in my sprites folder, which I don't really want it in there. So I'm just going to drag it out into the root folder, close those scenes and I might make a new folder, uh, other assets. I'll drag it into, into there. Um, now in here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my world and I'm going to create, I'll do this from scratch. I was just testing it before. Um, world, I'm going to create a canvas layer. Now this is going to be a pretty simple HUD. Uh, there will be a full UI tutorial for making a title screen later on. Um, canvas layer and in the canvas layer, we are going to add in a control node and that control node layout is going to be full rect um, and then we're going to add in a label. So this label here is going to be, and we may have to zoom in on this, I'm just going to put some text on it. Hello world, there we go. And it looks kind of hideous at the moment, but I'm going to put that over here. Now I could do some stuff to get it exact. I'm not worried about it right now. Now we can test this and just make sure it's working. We can hit play and it should stay due to the canvas layer. It should stay right there, whether we zoom in or out. So it's on its separate own little canvas layer that's relative to the screen size, not the camera. So what we're going to do here is I'm just going to set that to, to nothing. Um, and I'm going to go down here to custom fonts. Actually, let's just put in a 0000, zero, 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 zero like that. Uh, down to custom fonts. And you would think, oh, I just drag the font straight onto here. That doesn't work because we have the option of creating a new bitmap font or a dynamic font. So the dynamic font is the one that we want. And then we click on this to edit it. Now I will move that up so you can see it. We select font and I'll just bring this out so you can see the whole thing. Uh, just in case my camera is there. Not really sure I need the camera. It just, I don't know, kind of feels right. So we've got this here, joysticks monospace. It's going to go into the font data. And then above this, we've got settings. If you click the settings, you'll see size. So this is where you see your font size and that's actually fine. So the font size is here. Now, if we zoom to a hundred percent, we go, this is what it's going to look like in game. So I'll position that kind of like that there and I'll turn the font size up. Uh, is there a way that I can go align, right align? Uh, it probably doesn't seem to matter too much. No, um, but I'll, I'll make it a good size and position it where I want. Okay. So that, that looks pretty good there. I think that's probably a good size. And then we're going to go ahead and we're going to um, add in some code for this. So on the world, this one, um, what I'm going to do is in this bit, no, not in that bit. I'm not sure why I had that bit of code there. Um, we'll just leave it just in case it's actually being used by something. Um, in the process, what we're going to do is we're going to go dollar sign um, canvas layer 
label.text equals test. Now, if we run this, it should change that label text to test instead of being, yep, so there it is, that works. And we had it right aligned, so it's not gonna kind of appear halfway across the screen, it's going to appear from the right-hand side of where we put it. But what we wanna do, if we go and load up our project, project settings, our auto load singleton here in game stats, there was some code that I had put in here before, but I'm gonna write it from scratch now. So we're gonna say func get time. And then remember that what we did was we, we recorded the os.getticks.msec um, or millisecond as soon as the game was ready to play. So that's when the player starts. Now we, we could make it so that the timer starts when they start moving. We may get around to doing that, but for now we'll just get the timer working. So get time, what we're gonna do here is we're going to set var um, current time equals os.game, sorry, no, it's os.getTicks msec minus game start time. Okay, that's gonna get the current time. So this number is gonna keep going up, but we're gonna subtract the game start time from it. Okay, then we're gonna sort out the minutes. Minutes equals current underscore time divided by a thousand, divided by 60. I think, no, modulo 60. No, divided by 60, that should be right. Then we need var seconds equals current time divided by a thousand modulo 60. So I will explain that in a minute and then we'll get uh, var milliseconds equals current time um, modulo a thousand divided by a hundred, just so that we don't have a huge amount at the end. It's just gonna be two different things. So what's happening here, and I'll just double check that I've actually got that correct. Uh, yep, that is right. Um, say the milliseconds, and I'll bring up a calculator here. Uh, calc. Bring up a calculator and we'll do this. Uh, I might switch to the programmer calculator uh, because it has modulo. So say the, the milliseconds, so 1,000 milliseconds in one second. The milliseconds is at let's say 10,000. In terms of minutes, there's zero minutes. So if we go 10,000 divided by 1,000 divided by 60, well, we're at, we're at zero because it's doing, it's going to do the calculations, hopefully as integer calculations. Um, I know it does in Python. I'm not hundred percent sure on here. I think so, but let's say we do now. So that's going to give us zero seconds for that. So let's go zero, let's find the seconds. So zero minutes, let's find the seconds for that. So 10,000 divided by 1,000 equals 10, and then modulo 60. So modulo is gonna give us the remainder. So modulo 60, 10. So this is gonna be 10 seconds. And then we can go milliseconds. Um, well, it, it will be zero, 1,000 divided by 100 is gonna be zero. Um, but let's say we've got a bigger number. Let's put in 888888 uh, divided by 1,000 divided by 60 is going to give us 14 minutes. But if we do the same thing, uh, divided by 1,000 equals that, and then modulo 60, it's going to give us M48 seconds. And if we want the milliseconds until the next one, so 888888 divided by uh, 1,000 uh, divided by 100 equals eight milliseconds until the next one. And I, th did I do that right there? I think that's wrong. I think that should be, oh no, it, it is right. Okay, so with this last bit, then we're gonna say return and we're gonna to have to form a bit of a string here. So return string minutes, because that's a number, we have to convert it to a string, plus a colon, plus 
str second, that's also a number we converted to a string, plus um, a colon, plus msec, which is a string, so which is an integer, so we need to convert it to a string. And we don't need that first line or first bracket or last bracket. So this here, um, we are going to return back to the place that calls it, which is going to be on our um, script, which is in world. And this here is going to be game stats dot get time. So get time will return that function and then this is going to update it. So let's see if that works. Run the world. Not quite what I had in mind. Um, the milliseconds is too little. I think it should be bigger than that. Um, it seems quite it seems quite slow, or it may be that we're we're doing something wrong. Um, I'm just going to print it out as well. So we'll just go print print game stats get time and so now we're just going to do a little bit of troubleshooting uh, the timer is working correctly but okay that's not anything at all like what I had last time uh, so let's go ahead and have a look at my previous script which was uh, this one here and that's the new one which is exactly the same Hmm. I know that I've got commas here uh, rather than there. Let's just divide that by 10 uh, and see if that gives us a, a better number at the end there. Oh yeah, that, that, that's more what I want. Um, now we want to make sure that we're gonna write some if statements now. Okay, so this is where it's gonna get a little bit, bit messy. Okay, so if um, and we're going to change this down here. We're going to make it so it looks nice all the time. If minutes is less than 10, minutes equals, we'll say, if minutes equals zero, minutes equals zero, zero as a string, else minutes equals zero plus str minutes. So if zero, if it's nine, it's gonna be zero, nine. So that's gonna add that there and make it into a string. So we'll fix this part up in a minute. Um, and then we'll go, same thing with seconds. If seconds is less than 10, um, we'll say if seconds equals zero, seconds equals zero, zero else seconds equals uh, zero oops and we're making these strings so these are not numbers it's actually just conjoining the string this string with whatever the the number is so it's going to be one through nine or whatever um i don't actually need that one do i because it's going to add it to it regardless so i can just do that and same with that one. Uh, I think I may need it here though. Let's see. If msec equals um, less than 10. If msec equals zero, zero, or zero, M set equals zero zero. Else M set equals zero plus str M sec. Okay, let's see if this works. Now we don't need these bits down here because these are already going to be actually no, we will need them. So we'll leave them there. 
it, it shouldn't have a problem converting a string to a string. Um, and we'll test this. Okay, so you can see up in the top there, it is working. If I get to that checkpoint and die, you see the timer remains. If I go here and die, the timer remains. But if I hit R, it resets and goes back to the start. Now I haven't designed this test level very well because it's pretty much impossible to get past this first thing because of the height of the jump there. <laughs> but it's, it is working, we've got the timer working. Um, if I was to test it, I imagine it's going to go up to um, one minute. I'll see if I can talk for one minute or you can just fast forward the video and see if it actually works. If it doesn't work, I'll be doing some troubleshooting. Otherwise, this will be the end of the video here. We have the timer working and um, it resets when you hit the reset button or force a reset, uh, but it doesn't reset when you just die and go to a checkpoint. So it also looks pretty nice. I think it looks pretty nice. You can make it bigger. You might want to put a little uh, label behind it. Uh, we're almost at the one minute mark and I'm not going to sit here for 60 minutes just to make sure that works. There we go. One minute, one second. Cool. And we've got the milliseconds working as well. So that's all good. I'll see you in the next video. Uh, the next video um, will be a surprise, mainly because I haven't thought of what I'm going to do next. So it'll be a surprise for me too.